guys, so I am sitting down to work with Eli on some kindergarten. Um, we are, um, it is the end of April when I'm filming this. We are finishing up our school year. He has about 10 reading lessons left and he's been flying through them. So I do believe he'll finish before we call school for the year. Um, and I wanted to walk you through a live lesson together just because I haven't done one of these with All About Reading since the beginning of this school year. Or actually it was the end of last school year when I did it as a review. So we didn't actually start when I received the materials. We started in July. So now that it's April, um, we are wrapping up. I love this curriculum. I have used this with all three of my kids so far. They're all three very different learners. And... It has been amazing. It's a multi-sensory approach, so you can, uh, there's just different things they can do. There's a lot of different ways. You can use all of the different methods. You can be selective with what you do. Um, and so I'll, I'll run through this um, with how the lesson is set up. It's pretty much open and go. It's super simple. Um, I'm gonna put a link up here my right hand yeah I'm gonna put a link up here to that original video just because I do a full comparison between the old um, first edition which was all black and white and then the color edition which is the second edition when I first did the review I was excited about it and um, I of course after using the old version for two years uh, or twice was excited about the color but it really was just that much more exciting for my son when he was doing the games and the activities um, I couldn't have imagined that when I first saw it but now that we've walked through it I see why it was worth it to invest in um, the second edition so we are on lesson 40 um, I'll flip you around and show you how that is set up and then we'll just do a lesson with Mr. Eli you ready dude yeah He's excited to share with you guys. Okay, so this is the, ooh, where did it go? There we go. This is the teacher's manual. So I flip open to level 40, and like I said, it's pretty much open and go. Um, I just quickly flipped through and saw everything I was gonna need, and so I pulled them out of the student book. Um, the flashcards, if you, you can either, you know, check the book to see what you need, but they're also written up at the top here, um, what lesson they are and what order they go in. So. I, you know, most people would probably have prepped this ahead of time, but I pretty much prep these flashcards and pull them apart off the sheet as I need them um, and then put them in our little box. So I've got that. I've got this. I used to prep these pages for him as well, but he does enjoy cutting. So sometimes he wants to do those while I'm reviewing this. So right here, you have everything you need is written right here. Um, and then you've got an objective. This is this box right here is gold if it's been a while since you've been in kindergarten yourself. Because um, especially when you're talking about letter sounds, like the first sound and the second sound of certain letters, um, there's a lot of things like that I had forgotten. And it's not that I forgot how to read, it's that I forgot how to teach it. Like I forget, you know, this is when you use the second sound of S versus the first sound. And this is this is why this sound sounds this way sometimes and sounds this way. Like you forget those rules just because reading becomes such a natural part of your life. And so this is a great section to review. Um, so it gives you like a quick little overview, which is super helpful. So I'll read that before we get started. And then we will review um, the, uh, the last lessons, uh, phonogram cards and word cards if necessary. But I find that for Eli, um, once he masters it, it really is kind of exhaustive to go back through those for him. Um, so I'll only do that if I feel like that he's shaky. Um, and then we'll start with the letter tiles here. So we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, dude. So the word bathtub is actually two words that make up one word, right? Yeah. The word bath and the word tub. And when you put them together, they say bathtub. Right. Two smaller words put together form a special type of word. We call this word a compound word. Can you say compound word? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna, can you say compound word? Compound word. Compound word. So we're gonna play a game with these birds, okay? We're gonna see um, if these birds can help us make some compound words. So what you need to do is you need to find two matching birds Put them on the branch together and see what word they make Are together. These uh, they're close, but not exactly. There's another one. Oh, wait. Yep, they are. Cannot. 
So what are the two words that make it up? Can and not. And together they say? Cannot. Cannot, good job. Okay, go ahead and put that down. Next. Back and pack make backpack. Good. Um, quick sand. Nice, and what two words? Quick and sand. Okay, good. Pretty informal by the end of the school year. We just sit down and kind of do everything casually, but especially these games. Ugh. What is that? Oh. <laughs> what? Really? What is it? Say. Lipstick. Lipstick. What are the two words? Lip and stick. Good. Bobcat. Cat. Bobcat. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And Bob and Cat. Yes. Good. Wait, what's Bob? It's a name. Bobstick. <laughs> what? And you put these on a big pen. What are the two big words? Big pen! Try again, look at that. Carefully. I know you're having fun playing. Pig pen. Okay, what are the two words? Pig and pen. And what does it say together? What's the pig. compound word? Good. Pig pen. Like your bedroom. It's like a Pig Wait, pen. What? <laughs> I can't find it. Let's, oh, this mask. Well, let's see. Put them together. Do they make a word? Bathtub. Nice. <gasps> In bath and tub. Good. Mm. What is it? Milkman. Milkman. And milk and man. Nice. Itself? Huh? And it has it and self. Yeah. Were you confused about that compound word? Yeah. Itself? How about like, the bird flew into the window and injured itself? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So itself is a compound word. Catfish! Nice. All right, cool. So if this is neat too, if you have kids who are interested, if you wish to identify the birds with your student, here's a list of the birds represented, which is cool. That's fun. Um, okay, now we're gonna move on to Chop Chop, which was Jesse's favorite activity. Um, you, when this used to be in black and white, I remember he loved this. Bella's favorite was an egg flipper game, which I still have because the kids have enjoyed it, so I'll show you that at the end. So um, we're gonna cut these out and he's gonna work on chopping up some compound words. All right, I have a knife for you. <laughs> Be careful with that, hold it the right way. <laughs> so you are going to chop some fruits and veggies for me, okay? But before you just get started, I'm gonna explain. You, okay, sorry about that, daddy called. Um, so, <laughs> was that annoying to you? We got interrupted, I'm sorry. Okay, so what I need, what, what is this, first of all, what fruit? Apple. An apple, duh. So we're gonna chop this in half, but you're gonna cut it in between, and I'll show you guys here. We're gonna cut it in between its two words. So you need to tell me what the two words are. That, first tell me the whole word, and then tell me. What's the word? Dish pan. Dish pan. So chop it in between now and show me what are the two words. No, just hold the knife on it like you're pretending to chop it. Chop the words. What is? What are the two words that make up the compound word? Dish pan. Nice. And together it says? Dish pan. Okay, so now you can pick your own fruit and veggie out of there. Let's put the bird on. Are you going to feed the birds? <laughs> okay, good idea. What's next? Um, let's do a, whatever. What is that? Drumstick. <laughs> That's not a drumstick. You mean a breadstick? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's drumstick. the, oh, drumstick is the word. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. And what are the two words that make it up? Drum and stick. And then what's the compound word? Drumstick. Nice. Okay, they're going to eat drums and they're going to eat sticks. Okay. And the dish pan. Oh, oh man. <laughs> What's next? Sunlight. We need sunlight. That's actually not light. Read it again. Scoop sunlight. your scoop your word. What is it? Lit. Lit. Good. 
Sun lit. What are the two words? Chop it. Sun lit. Sun and lit. Nice. We're gonna eat sun lit. <laughs> Egg shell. What are the two words? Egg and shell. Perfect. Now they're gonna eat eggshells. Uh, they're or they're gonna eat a pineapple. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much food. Annabeth loves playing with these when he's done, and she'll pretend to do school with her baby. Flapjack. What is it? Flap and jack. Do you know what a flapjack is? No. It's like a pancake. That's oh, what some yeah, people call no, pancakes. No, no. So what are the two words? Flap and jack. Flap and jack. I have a question. The word jack, if it was a word on its own, what would be different about it? What do you mean? The word jack, you see it there? One of those letters would be capitalized, wouldn't they? Yeah. Which one? Jack. Which letter in jack? The K would be capitalized at the end? J. The J. And why is that? Why because would we, J. Because it's a name, right? Yeah, so we capitalize the J. So when it's together, when it's a compound word, we don't capitalize it. It's flapjack. It's flapjack. Because they're going to eat flapjacks. They're going to eat flapjacks. But if Jack was eating flapjacks, the J would be capitalized in the first word, right? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you say, Mom. Codfish. And how would we, how would we, um, I know you read that correctly because you don't know what that is. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> how would you cut that? It's caught in the... Good. Codefish. It's no, codefish. it's not codefish. Codfish. Don't be silly. Good. Okay, next. They're really codfish. They're hungry. Chopstick. Oh, no. It's chopping sticks. Let's see. I'm gonna chop it. The chop. Hmm? Nice. Chopstick. Good. They're gonna eat chopsticks or pumpkins. Oh, yeah, chopsticks. That pumpkin's huge. We're feeding fat. the birds. <laughs> it's really fat. <laughs> A big fat pumpkin. Dustbin. Dustbin. Try it again, nice and slow. What is your what does your letter say? Think about it before you, you rush. Dustbin. Go, good. Dustbin. Dustbin. Look at it on the ground, put it down and focus on it, okay? Because you're you're trying to chop it fast. What is it? Use your finger and scoop your letters. You're not looking at each letter. Oh my gosh, I'm wrong. You were right, it's dustbin. I assumed it was dustpan and that you would, you're right buddy, I'm sorry. Good job. So what are the two words that make Dust it? Dust and bin. And what is the compound word? Dustbin. Dustbin, okay I'm good. Dustbins. Wow, I'm sorry I assumed that. I'm okay. Dustbins. Okay, so now we're well, gonna wait, do the same. What about this one? Oh, okay, go ahead and read that one. Milkman. It has milk and man. Milk okay, man. Milk man's. Good. <gasps> They're monsters. <laughs> so now we're going to end up going through some of these words again. Um, not all of them. And we are going to do the flashcards. So, Eli, because I'm holding the camera, will you go through these flashcards, please? Yeah. Okay. Birds have to eat. Oh, we're going to feed them all? Okay, there they go. Okay, take this. Read that to me. Bathtub. Okay. <gasps> Next. Not. What is it? Cannot. Good. Next. Sunset. Good. Himself. Good. Woodmill. Windmill. Eggshell. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> Upset. Upset. I'm crying. <laughs> <laughs> up. 
I can't read it. What? Pawn. A pawn. Yeah, you could read it. No, not you. You said it the right way. What is it? Sandbox. Wait, go back to the other one. Go back, go back, go back one card. What is that word? What's your final uh, answer? A, a pawn. Good. You could read it. Why didn't you think you could? Sandbox. Good. Because the sandbox says sandbox. Okay. Okay. Be You're back to the beginning again. No. There's one more. What is it? Better. Turn it around. You stinker. Why are you goofing? Because this is the last one. And what does it really say? Sandbox. Okay. Um, so, one more thing we're going to add to this lesson, which is a leap word. So, when they do a leap word, it's because um, it is um, like a uh, sight word or a word that doesn't follow the rules. They, oh, thanks for calling me out, mister. I was just um, filming Eli's dirty feet instead of the <laughs> uh, paper. I just realized. I'm sorry, guys. Florida life. Um, so I'm going to show you this word. You might already know what it says, but um, this word. Am I going to read that? That's actually, you're going to read that in the next lesson. This word is do, as do. in what did you do today, okay? What did you, you see the O? The yep. O doesn't say the sound we expect it to. What sound would we expect that O to say? Da. We'd expect it to say da, right. But it actually says do. do okay? I already knew that. Yeah, I know. I figured you knew that because he's kind of more of like an instinctive reader. But um, either way, I like that they put those leap words in. So when they see this frog, they know to stop and think. That's not going to follow the rules. Um, now we are going to practice fluency. Um, I just pulled these out. We don't have, I don't have him do all of the fluency. I just usually have him do some of the sentences. Um, and it can be like a few that he picks. Um, but this is just good practice of putting words together instead of reading words on their own. So will you read a few of these sentences for me? Point to the ones and read them. I have to read all of these. No, just read a few of them. Point to a couple of them and read them to me. Tom had, Tom had a drumstick. Yep, drumstick. <laughs> Tom, Tom had a drumstick in his lunchbox. Good. <laughs> drumstick in his lunchbox. How about this one? What is this one down here? Jim set up, Jim set up the tent. Jim set up the tent on the hall. Top. Read your letters. Hilltop. Good. Read that sentence again, please. The bottom sentence right here. Jim, Jim set up the tent. The bottom one. Jim set up the tent on the hilltop. Good. So what did Jim do, Eli? <gasps> set up. Set up the tent on that hilltop. Were you listening to me? I was me? listening to you, yes. Okay, how about this one right here, this bottom one? Ted had a glass bell. Ted had a glass bell, but it fell. Ted had a glass bell, but it fell on the black top. Nice. What's black top? Black top is like, um... Yeah, like that. Good job. <laughs> Sorry, mommy talks with their hands. All right, so then we are going to read aloud and he will mark his progress chart. So since we've already read aloud today, we are going to have him mark off lesson number 40. Lesson 40. I only did one lesson. Did you want to do more than one? Yes. You do. No. no. Okay. Do put um put a sticker on your lesson. Put a sticker on there and then tell me how many lessons we have left after this one. So just so you guys know, every lesson isn't that long. That one was teaching a new concept. Um, so the teaching the new concept, like the um, compound <coughs> words, takes a little longer. Um, but usually when you get toward the end of the book, it's a lesson and then a reading lesson and then a lesson and a reading lesson. So lesson 41, um, tomorrow is just going to be reviewing 
doing a warm-up sheet, which is similar to the fluency sheet, where you talk about phrases that they're going to encounter in the book. Um, you can talk about any vocabulary they aren't familiar with, and then you just read, and then you can discuss um, a couple of other things and possibly do the activity sheet. So sometimes depending on how long it takes we them to read have... I'll split the lesson up into two days. Sometimes we'll do it in one day. It just it's matters right. where he is um, And there are two books that you read we only in one lesson 53 more lessons. That's a bunch 53 more <laughs> uh, I didn't mean two books. I meant two stories. So then um, we would just do this little cat activity sheet and then read this uh, warm -up. We only have 13 Read, no, count again. Read the warm-up sheet for yuck, and then read yuck, and then that would be the whole lesson. So not as much cutting and prepping. Um, then we're gonna talk in the next lesson about- Yeah, we only have 13 more lessons. Plural words, and same thing as we did today. Some um, letter tiles, some activities, and then some flashcards. And then next, we're gonna read two stories again. So. It goes back and forth between us, some longer lessons and new concepts and some shorter lessons. Mommy, so, um, we only have 13 more lessons left. 13 more? Yeah. Okay, oh yeah, you're right. Man, there's another time I, I said no and you were right again. I'm sorry, man, I need to listen to you, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Eli- Listen to me for snacks. What, for snacks, mm -hmm. yeah. What's your favorite part about, um, all about reading, Eli? Is it the books, is it the games, is it the, Flashcards. What's your favorite part? Are you kidding me? What? The games. You love the games. Yeah. I have a couple of the games and the, and reading the books. <laughs> Why do you love the games so much? Because okay. they're fun. They are fun. And they're all about reading. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> this is one of the um, games I had mentioned recently. I wanted to show you that. I also want to show you. Um couple of others here. Let me grab it out of the bin here if I can. Okay. Um, so this one, the kids all have loved this and then Eli really enjoyed it recently. So we just had him take a rubber spatula and then he would flip the word over and he had to read the word on the back. So that was really fun. Um, and then same for this one. He was just pretending that somebody was receiving gifts and so he had to pick a present and flip it over and find out what gift had been given. Now, I can't remember what lessons these were from, but probably about 10 to 15 lessons ago. Um, so there's just another example of what some of these games are. Um, so again, the multi-sensory approach, you've got activities, hands-on activities, you've got the hands-on letter tiles, you've got just the reading flashcards, you have them reading themselves, it suggests for you to read aloud to them, they're practicing fluency charts, there's a lot of options, so you can either do a couple of them, you can do all of them, it's your discretion. It was getting real loud in here, sorry. I had to use my mom voice for a minute, so I had to turn the camera off. <laughs> Anyway, um, so that was a perfect lesson to show you how much it picks up by the end of the curriculum. Like I said before, sorry, I thought maybe I should pop my face back on. Um, so like I said before, I'm gonna link the two videos up here. They're both really worth checking out if you are starting the curriculum shop or looking um, for a curriculum to invest in. The first video, like I said, was just lesson one, so you can see how far um, we've gotten in a year with where we're kind of finishing the year and where we started. Um, just all that this curriculum entails and then the second video is how I taught my reluctant reader which was my son Jesse um, who took longer than my other two to read but is now reading confidently and flying again thanks to this curriculum um, and then a couple of other things we used for just extra reading practice after that um, spoiler alert for that video we took almost two years on level one um, and there's nothing wrong with that it's totally totally up to you and your child's pace um, and there's also a pre-reading level if you think your kids could benefit from that. But I just wanted to say, like, we don't do a lot of academics until they're in elementary school officially. So while they have been familiar with the letter sounds, they were not confident in them at all until we started level one. And it really introduces each letter sound well, gives them time to grasp that before they move on to the next letter sound. So, um... If you check out their website, which I'll link below, you can kind of get an example of where each um, level is at, where they start. Um, and I think there is a like 
like a little sample test if you want to see if you want to or a placement test if you want to place them um, if they're not necessarily needing to start at the beginning so I hope you guys enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you like these do lesson with me do a lesson with us videos and I will try to do more of them next school year um, we're wrapping up now but we're starting the next school year just in a few weeks so um, and he will be using level two next year because I love it um, oh I was just gonna say um, that Eli was so excited to share this with you guys today. And so I wasn't even planning to film today, but he was like, is today the day we get to record my, my reading? Is today the day we get to record my reading? So I was like, okay, let's just fresh face to go on and record your reading. So he was so excited to share with you guys. And as you could see, his personality was just on full display. He is got that little class clown personality and I love it. He is a joy to teach. So Hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, give it a thumbs up if you did. That is so much more beneficial to my channel than you know. Um, it helps with keeping me relevant in the news feeds and all of that. So if you would give me a thumbs up, if you like these kinds of videos, that's super helpful and I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys soon.